It's night and day. Dissidia Final Fantasy. That day back again. Yes, back in the world of Dissidia Final Fantasy. We're going to go and fight some crazy bosses, but first! We're going to show you guys the skin that we got, because oh, yeah. it's slightly different than all the other skins in the world. <laughs> we have a one and only skin that you can get, <laughs> that everyone can get. <laughs> yes, it's everyone can get it, but you get it in a weird way, so we wanted to show you guys in case anybody out there was interested in getting it. And it's a Noctis looks, skin! Yes, and Noctis looks pretty cool in it, so it's worth it, I think. Yeah, it's ultra cheap, actually, so... Mm -hmm. Depending on your reality. <laughs> it could be all yours. Alright, so. Fatigues. There we go. The Royal Raiment. Oh man, that's even cooler than I thought. That looks so awesome. Yeah, Noctis gets a pinstripe suit. <laughs> that's so cool. Not exactly the best for actual combat, but yeah. you know, it does look badass. Yeah, it looks awesome. I mean, if you could beat the crap out of somebody in a pinstripe suit, <laughs> that's when you know you're pretty badass. Yeah, so the way you get this is different than the other skins. This is actually a cross promotion. So you get this by buying any sort of Nissan cup noodles kind of product. There were a bunch that were released that had Final Fantasy Dissidia or 15. Whatever, Final Fantasy characters on the boxes, but you don't need to get those. Just any cup noodles mm. from the Nissan brand will allow you to get this. Once you buy the cup noodles, you have to send a, a text to 87963, and the text is just cup noodles in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> One word, not two. <laughs> then you get a text back from 87964 saying, do you want to participate? And then you put yes. And then they'll send you the, the code, I think a couple days later, for your wonderful this Royal Raiment skin for Noctis. And you can buy like the cheapest, dirt cheap, you know, Nissan Yeah, they're like thing. super cheap. Yeah. Like, you don't have to like go all out for this. Price. Yeah, like under a dollar. Yeah. And you can get this cheaper than what a DLC usually costs. Mm. And then you get the Royal Raiment, which looks pretty freaking cool. Is there uh, like actual, is there like ramen noodles in in 15? Like, yeah. Is it like Nissan brand? It is Nissan oh, brand cup noodles awesome. in 15. That it's a little really weird, smart. like for a long term fan of the series, because yeah. there is blatant product placement in oh, Final Fantasy okay. 15. Yeah. In order, that game had like this crazy development cycle. Right. Where it started 10 years ago as Final Fantasy versus 13. They were going to make a. They were originally going to make the 13 universe kind of have a shared mythology and then a bunch of games um, branch out from that. Right. Where the games still had separate plots and all of that, like a usual Final Fantasy game, but they all shared the basic mythology of the 13 series, which involves Lissi and Falsi mm. and things like that, like share that universe and how that universe was created from, you know, the gods and uh, Etro. So anyway, the development for what eventually became 15 and started as Versus 13, dragged on for a long, long time. So once they shifted it up to 15, they ended up doing some cross-promotion and product placement. Oh, uh, okay. And eh, it's a little little iffy for a lot of long-term fans, but you can actually go out and buy cup noodles. There's a quest in the game that involves cup noodles, and one of the one of the main characters is huge into cup noodles. You know? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's insane. There's a lot of different foods in that game, so it's not just all cup noodles. Right, and bus, right. That game has... It actually has the best animated food I've ever seen in my life. Like, it looks, like, legit real, like you're looking at actual food. And there's a, there's hundreds of different types of dishes, and oh, they nice, all look yeah. amazing. And If you look at them, it will make you hungry. It, it <laughs> looks like legit, well-cooked dishes. Oh, wow. So, but yeah, cup noodles are among them. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just have, like, this fully, like, beautifully animated... Nissan cup noodles right in front of you in like the game and then you're going to be eating the same thing right in front of you while you play. It's like That that wasn't the one I was talking about <laughs> when I said it looks beautiful and makes you really hungry, but yes, you can do that I mean, <laughs> if you really want that meta effect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could do that if you were skilled enough in, with any of the dishes, but I just feel like not a lot of people are are able to just have this all out 
like the smorgasbord <laughs> and then be able to present it in the exact same way in the game. You can actually get this exact same DLC outfit for Noctis in the Final Fantasy XV game. Oh, okay. It was either a pre-order or DLC or both for mm -hmm. that game. And in that universe, they just say it's the formal formal wear of the line of Lucis, like the, the line of kings that he's from. Oh, okay. But yeah. you never see anybody actually wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even the king. But really, this, this came from when the game was still in development as Final Fantasy versus 13. They had some promotional material where King Regis, Noctis' father, was shown wearing this outfit. Mm. So... At, at, at an earlier point of that game, it had a completely different kind of thematic tone where Noctis' family was more mafia-based. Oh, okay. So this outfit kind of fit that theme more right. directly. And, but they did repurpose it, like I said, and use it in 15, and they made it in this game too. Yeah. <laughs> you can get it if you like noodles. <laughs> they went a little overboard with the noodles. Like there's, They did some goofy stuff. Like I said, there's a goofy quest involving the cup noodles, and also there's this goofy cup noodle helmet you can get in what? Final Fantasy 15 where you just yeah you just put a Noctis put a cup noodle hat right on his face and it's pretty it's, funny it's just like a bucket head is yeah it's basically a bucket <laughs> head yeah it's really funny oh that's fantastic that's beautiful I love the mafia backstory though I feel like that'd be that, well it definitely like presents itself in the uh, in the skin here like just how it looks in general well, now I associate that more with like a mafia thing than I would ever with royalty so yeah to speak, so it's, I guess they could have flared it up a little bit for like the royalty aspect, but I like the kind of modern, modern like cool chic look of it. I think the concept was like, how do we repurpose these assets we already have, as right. opposed to let's add, add to them to and it, do yeah. a lot more work. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of the Versus 13 storyline sounded very interesting. It was supposed to be a darker Final Fantasy type storyline, and it, again, it did use the mythology, the pre-existing mythology from the Final Fantasy XIII universe, so right. the concept of Etro's Gate is kind of a gateway that opens when the souls of the dead, or the souls of the living are crossing through to the realm of the dead. So basically when people die, right. they pass through Etro's Gate. Hmm. And Noctis and um, the female lead at the time, whose name was Stella, she got completely rewritten out of the story and didn't appear in the final version of 15 oh, at all. Wow. But Noctis and Stella could way. both see Etro's gate, which wasn't a thing that normal humans were capable right, of doing. Right. And they gained power from that. So this um, brought them into kind of conflict with each other. They were... Well, the story wasn't 100% fleshed out or anything like that, but it seemed like Noctis and Stella were potentially going to be... Uh, romantically involved, but then they would have to ha end up fighting each other oh, and have this okay. conflict where they'd have to just eventually just fight over like some something involving the gate or something like that. Like who wanted? I wouldn't say so. It's not like a matter of control or anything like that. It's more of a matter of good versus evil. Like who actually makes it through to that path and who doesn't, kind of thing. I'm really not sure. Unfortunately, I can't really answer questions on right. this one because yeah. there's just not enough story to. There is it. certain existing promotional material about it. It was never 100% fleshed out, yeah. so I, I can't okay. really answer everything. Not but yeah, cool. what there was about it was not very much. Right. Yeah. Since they didn't make it too far, and then they changed the director of the game entirely from hmm. Tetsu no Nomura okay. over to. Um, Tabata, who ended up finishing out 15 in a completely different way. Right. But yeah, yeah. Another cool thing about Versus 13 was that the people there, the people of Insomnia, worshipped death. Huh. So that also got carried forward, although they didn't explain it. Like all the main characters in Final Fantasy 15 wear black and they have skulls on their clothes in various oh, wow. places, and like highlights are. Um, just motifs in their clothing. Right, right. And they don't really explain it in any way in 15. Oh. But, yeah, yeah originally, it, that's where it came from, because, again, they were trying to make a darker type of Final Fantasy right. where they, the people worship death. So that has to do with also how they were going to have the Etro's Gate come into play. Mm. But, yeah, it's, a lot of things about that game sounded pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds really awesome. <laughs> it's just like a giant, it's like a town of just gothic people. <laughs> <laughs> they just love, they just love death in general. That's like their their thing. It's it's not like the devil or something. Like it's not like satanic. It's just the 
the whole thing about death. Yeah, it's like that's death. Oh, yeah. yeah, as okay. far as I understood it. I yeah. mean, I don't know if the devil even exists in Final Fantasy right. 15 universe yeah. or 13 or anything like that. <laughs> Some of the characters do say things along the lines of go to hell so mm. sort so of maybe uh, maybe I don't know if that's just one. English localization or if right. they say that in every language mm. anyway it looks like we could have told earlier in the game that Noctis doesn't have his full armature in this game because if you go to his weapons it only shows daggers a great sword a spear and a sword mm. so if we had looked here first then I wouldn't have taken as much time to look for a gun and a throwing star and all these other potentially <laughs> a bow any sort of long range weapons because in this game He's he only, only gets short. four. Yeah, exactly. The spear is the longest range thing that he has, apparently. And just by barely. What is that, a great sword? Yeah, a great sword. Man, that, is, that is insane. Yeah, <laughs> two-handed cleaver. Yeah, how do you even sword. lift something like that? It's a monster. Well, yeah, in a lot of cases, the characters couldn't. I yeah, mean, especially just one hand and like Cloud does sometimes yeah. with his like, massive thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, Cloud is one of... <laughs> the most well-known examples of <laughs> the cliche where the anime type hero has the gigantic sword yeah. that he couldn't possibly lift. Yeah, it's just maybe Cloud could because he had that exposure to um, Mako. Oh, okay. The life source energy of the planet. So, like any any character who was enhanced by that stuff gained it's like super strength. Yeah, and gained agility, strength. Like all that stuff. Okay. Exactly. Hmm. So maybe he could. Yeah, maybe but most like, of the characters couldn't lift their own weapons. Yeah, some weird <laughs> superhero. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, oh, I'm coming to get you, and he's like dragging it. Behind. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you wait, I'll get there yeah, one day. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you just stay right there. <laughs> it's coming at you. He slowly hauls it across the battlefield. <laughs> oh, that'd be a more, much more interesting game. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have to plan Drag your, your weapon yeah. simulator. <laughs> you have to plan your attack because in like 10 minutes you're going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> your enemies planned your attack for you. You just die. I mean, if we bring realism into the games, then the oh, characters yeah. with guns just win quickly. Oh, 100%. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Unless you hide behind that giant sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, Vincent man. and Barrett and Balthier from 12, they just... Oh, we have guns and you guys don't. Yeah, just dominate. <laughs> Normally, yeah. if you get shot with a gun, you don't just lose a couple hit points. You you kind of lose a life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. All right. See you later.